Welcome to the Park Forest Historical Society's Park Forest Hall of Fame induction for 2021. I'm Jane Nickel, President, Archivist, and Museum Director. We count on nominations from the public for our Hall of Fame, which has been held annually since 1994. This year, we received only three from the public, so our board chose to nominate three leaders from Park Forest past who have been overlooked for too long. We think you will approve of all. The Society operates the 1950s Park Forest House Museum and the Park Forest Archive and Local History Collection, both in St. Mary's Catholic Church at 227 Money Road. The museum is currently open by appointment only with flexible hours. I can take appointments to meet people who want to do research on Park Forest and I can be reached through email on our website which is www.parkforesthistory.org and my phone number is posted there on the website as well and on our Facebook pages. Membership in the Society is open to all. Forms are on the website or can be picked up or mailed out. Join to help us save your history. Once again, we thank our members and donors for helping us reach our goal in meeting a $5,000 matching challenge grant from the Village of Park Forest. We thank all who've helped us match this grant in the past and welcome donations, memberships, and visitors to help us meet the challenge again next year. And we don't mind it, donations in between either. We also thank the Park Forest Public Library Board for making an annual donation of $1,650 to pay half the archive office rent at St. Mary's. The archival collection was started at the library with tax funding and half the collection is still considered to be library property. The society houses it and provides all of the volunteer hours to document it and provide reference services to it. These financial donations help keep our doors open. We hope you've enjoyed our programs posted on YouTube during our 2020 to 2021 year. We thank all of those helping to get them launched and especially Paul, Paul Blobaum for digitizing the older programs. It's taken a great deal of effort to get them on YouTube and we hope you'll watch them and support our work. The program planned for May 16th will be the Park Forest Aqua Center, an oral history of 1954 to 1988. It's videotaped interview with John Joyce, then director of Park Forest, Parks and Recreation, and Chris Martin, an original Aqua Center board member. It was done by Tom McDade, longtime employee of Park Forest Developers, ACB, and myself. The interview has been transcribed and is available as a Word document. By April 15th, I hope to have the museum decorated for its summer at the museum. We put out our Aqua Center display and the bound transcript along with several photos and drawings of the pool complex is available to browse all year. So I hope you enjoy seeing our presentations, both sent in and spoken here in our video. And um, we're glad that you're with us. Welcome to the 2021 Park Forest Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm Jonathan Vanderbilt, Mayor for the Village of Park Forest. 2021 and 2020 has been a volatile year for our nation, our country, but not our community. We stood together through the pandemic, through the riots of Chicago and throughout the nation. Together we stood for Black Lives Matter. That didn't happen overnight in Park Forest. That was through our forefathers setting numerous points where we, they were going to believe that Park Forest is going to be desegregated, that it is going to be an inclusive, diverse community. We can see a school board member who made sure that the Illinois State Board of Education had a desegregation policy set in place, and that happened starting here in Park Forest. We have a doctor who stood up for women's rights and women's health during the Vietnam era. We have a public works safety director who helped grow the community and made sure that Park Forest Police Department had some of the best trained officers and made sure that desegregation was a policy within the police department. 
We see a village manager and a village commissioner working together for inclusiveness within the community. Park Forest is a diverse community, and that didn't happen overnight. That happened by our forefathers working together, hand in hand with the residents, to make sure that Park Forest was inclusive, equitable, and desegregated for all. Thank you for attending the Park Forest Historical Society's Park Forest Hall of Fame for the 2021 inductees. On behalf of the Board of Trustees for the Village of Park Forest, we'd like to say thank you and congratulations to the inductees and thank you for the time and effort by the Park Forest Historical Society Board as they put this together. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, my name is Joe Hernandez and I'm accepting uh, this award of my mom in the Park Forest Hall of Fame, Ann Hernandez, the late Ann Hernandez. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much for this award. My mom would really love this. Um, thank you very much to the Park Forest Historical Society. Uh, she would really like being in the company of everybody else that's in there as well. I really appreciate it. Um, my mom moved to Park Forest in the late 50s, came back in the late 50s, uh, where she went to Rich East High School, graduated in 1965, and then started a family. Uh, my mom was very active in the community. Uh, she really cared about children, um, especially in education. So she was a board member for a few terms, and there's a picture of her right here in the paper, being sworn in on her second, uh, second term. Pretty cool. Uh, like I said, she was really involved and social concerns. Uh, she really cared about Park Forest quite a bit. Um, at one point, she was involved in a protest group called the Light Brigade, who uh, got some TV recognition on the news, and he would sit out and uh, protest about getting a street light put on um, on Western Avenue and Beacon Boulevard, um, so it'd be nice and safe for the children that are getting bused to the school and out of the school. It was a dangerous intersection. And there's some shots of us here protesting here. Uh, there's me, my mom, pretty cool. And here's an article she wrote for the reporter describing us being out there and everything. Uh, she uh, always contributed to the local newspapers. As uh, time went on, um, she also was involved in a, a group called Focus. Uh, she was a co-chairman. It was a biracial uh, community organization which reported back to the Illinois offices of education. And she also got an award uh, in 2003 um, for Unsung Heroine uh, Award by the Village of Park Forest, which states, uh, the Village of Park Forest indeed is fortunate enough to have many citizens and individuals who regularly demonstrate their commitment to improvement and causes both in their professional employment and their actions. So she really loved that. Also too, uh, here she is, Ann Hernandez, fighter for social concerns. I love this, I'm very proud of her in this. So my mom really generally cared about Park Forest all the way until her untimely death in 2008. And she really would have loved this award. And who knows, what she would have done if she was still alive through these uh, really crazy times right now. But on behalf of the Hernandez family, me, my dad, and my brother, we would say thank you very much for this beautiful award and we really appreciate it. And thank you very much. The Karish family is truly honored to have our late father, Dr. Jerome Karish, to have been selected to the Park Forest Hall of Fame. After completing his residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Cook County Hospital, our father and mother, Sheila Karish, moved to Park Forest in 1957. At that time, he established his 16-year medical practice with Dr. Jerome Warren on Western Avenue and at St. James Hospital and Ingalls Hospital. He brought many Park Foresters into the world of Park Forest. 
Our parents were the proud parents of five sons, Ira, Sigmund, Morris, Isidore, and Dean. From 1959 to 1973, our father contributed to the medical education, music culture, and political issues in Park Forest. He presented several lectures to the community on obstetrical health and is an accomplished and gifted classically trained tenor. He sang throughout our community. Importantly, he led the opposition to a proposed referendum for a nine hole golf course in Central Park, a topic of great debate in the community that ultimately preserved this space for children and families. His passionate anti-Vietnam War stance led to his founding of the Democrats for Free Debate in Park Forest, and he was a delegate to the Democratic National Convention in support of Robert F. Kennedy. Having worked at St. James Hospital in Chicago Heights, our father was very aware of the plight of poverty among the Mexican-American community migrant workers and African-Americans in East Chicago Heights. He founded Community Now, an organization committed to helping the poor and disenfranchised. Our family is so honored with this wonderful recognition. Our father's heart and soul were always about community involvement, helping the underserved and contributing to, be to the betterment of our community. We are deeply appreciative to the Park Forest Historical Society. Thank you all very much. I'm honored to present the nomination of Yan Lang to the Park Forest Hall of Fame. When Mr. Liang called on the phone or visited the Park Forest Library, he announced himself as my old, old friend and ambassador, Yan Lang. As long as I knew him, almost 20 years, he was already my old, old friend. The ambassador part came later after frequent library visits, many conversations, and our metaphorical three cups of tea. Mr. Liang's library ambassadorship came with an official name tag, a prime parking spot near the staff entrance where he could ring the doorbell and announce to whomever greeted him that he was here to see Barbara Osuch, the library director. That's me. As he extended his hand to shake theirs and introduce himself, tell her, her old, old friend and ambassador, Yan Lang, is here. The repetition of old, old friend carried both meanings, old as in a number, having lived for a long time, my old friend, and old as endearing, familiar, of long standing, after three cups of tea, my old friend. His repetition of old, old reminds me of a short poem by Wendell Berry where the word quietly is repeated. Suppose we did our work like the snow, quietly, quietly leaving nothing out. He took a seat at the round table in my office where we would chat about whatever might be happening in the library, tend to whatever library business there might be, and then visit like old friends. We exchanged invitations. I attended several Chinese New Year celebrations that he hosted at Brookdale Senior Living, listened to a talented Chinese musician play three variations on Plum Blossom on a variety of instruments. In exchange for my appreciation of Plum Blossoms, Mr. Liang enthusiastically attended the library's Sunflower Festival, dedications of little free libraries and any other opportunity to support and promote the library services and programs throughout the community. Mr. Liang was a wealth of knowledge on many topics, a retired statistician, and the longest standing library card holder in the history of Park Forest Library. A revered presenter at the annual Popery Lecture Series, he shared his expertise on various topics, ranging from his world travels, stewardship of the National Park Service, and study and admiration of artist Norman Rockwell. Mr. Liang devoted his working life to defining people through numbers. He was the youngest of six children born in Canton, China. His father, who had been the Chinese ambassador to Australia, died when he was a small boy. Following in his father's footsteps, Mr. Liang served proudly as library ambassador 
at Olympia Field Senior Living and throughout the villages of Olympia Fields and Park Forest. Over the years, Mr. Lang and his wife, Olivia, had traveled to 116 countries and every state in the United States. He has been on every continent. Everywhere we went, we saw something good, he said, but the more we traveled, the more we got to appreciate what we have here. In his 90s, Jan Lang took a second chance on love, marrying Mary Chisholm. With age comes wisdom. Wisdom recognizes that which is not quantifiable. Love, joy, gratitude. You can read more about this love story and Jan Lang's many lifetime accomplishments in a feature story by Donna Vickroy, published in the Daily Southtown and Chicago Tribune in February 2016. I'm grateful that Mr. Liang's nomination to the Hall of Fame connected me to his loving daughter, Mabel, and that I could share joyful photos of her father among sunflowers and on a spring day when cherry blossoms rain down. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mabel Lang. I'm here on behalf of my father, Jan Lang. I'm proud to accept his induction into the Park Forest Historical Society's Hall of Fame. Our family, mom, dad, my elder brother, Jim, and I moved to Park Forest in May, 1955. Later that decade, we became the first family to move into the Lincolnwood neighborhood. Mom and dad lived in Park Forest for almost 50 years. They became active in organizations located in Park Forest. These included Faith United Protestant Church, the Park Forest Public Library, the Rich Township Senior Center, and the Rich Township Chapter of the AARP. Fortunately, when they decided that they needed to move into senior living, they found a place in Olympia Fields, the next town over. This allowed them to stay connected with these Park Forest organizations. Dad lived in Olympia Fields for almost another two decades. Unfortunately, he passed away early this January, so he did not get to learn about this award. On Dad's behalf, I thank the Park Forest Historical Society for this great honor. I only wish he could be here. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cliff Butts. And in 2015, I retired as the Chief of Police from the Village of Park Forest. It is with great pleasure that I am here today to present one of my predecessors into this year's class of the Park Forest Hall of Fame. In June of 1951, Dave Wilson, the first public safety director who formed the Park Forest Police, resigned in order to take a better paying job in advertising. Wilson's last words to the village were a warning, to hire a man that was rising in the police field, not someone who was ready to retire and rest on his past experience. The village interviewed 12 candidates for the opening and chose this year's Hall of Fame recipient, Mylon Plowczyk, as their new Director of Public Safety. Mylon, who was only 44 years of age at the time, was the current Public Safety Director in Midland, Texas. He had previously held similar positions in both Michigan towns of Hazel Park and Saginaw. His first day on the job was July 15, 1951, and his salary was a whopping $5,500 a year. In the beginning, Plowczyk had supervision responsibilities for both the full-time police department and the volunteer fire department. He was normally seen in a suit, the proper attire at the time, but that changed in 1955 with the hiring of Olaf Sorensen as the village's first full-time fire chief. The director began wearing a uniform and his duties became more clearly associated with the growth and leadership of the police department. The village was continuing to grow by leaps and in order to keep pace, Director Plowczyk needed to expand the police department and it went from the nine officers he, he inherited in July of 1951 to better than double that number with 15 full-time officers by 1960. A rank structure started by Wilson was enhanced with the ranks of lieutenant and sergeants being expanded in order to form a more structured chain of command. Plowczyk preferred to be addressed as Colonel, an honorary title bestowed upon him at a previous position. The title stuck and he was even referred to as such by FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover in a congratulatory letter after Milan was elected president of the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police in 1958. The colonel was responsible for bringing a sense of professionalism and style to the PD. New uniforms with fresh blue stripes on the pants legs, Eisenhower jackets, 
pin tie badges and new patches with the famous Park Force clock tower logo were some of his innovations, along with the planning, building and opening of the new public safety building at Lakewood and Forest that housed both the police and fire departments and to this day is still the home of the police department. Throughout his 11 year career with the village, he was a fixture in town meetings, local gatherings, school and social events as the village grew and continued to prosper. He was the chief law enforcement officer during many of Park Forest's historic events, including development and building of Ritchie's High School, the villages winning their first All-American City Award in 1956, and most notably he was credited for his take charge and calming influence when Charles Wilson and his children became the first black family to move to Park Forest in 1959, an event which has been well documented by the Smithsonian Institute in their exhibit on Park Forest. Milan was a strong advocate of professional training for the police and was appointed to the Illinois Associations of Chiefs of Police Technical Advisor on police training to the University of Illinois. In his capacity as their board chairman, he was instrumental in the state's passing of legislation in 1961, setting forth minimum standards of training for new police recruits. The department received numerous awards during Director Plavzik's tenure, including two from the National Safety Council in both 1958 and 1960, with the department being feeded as having the safest driving fleet in the nation. In 1961, the Colonel became the first ever Park Forest resident to receive the JC's Most Outstanding Citizen of the Year Award. In 1962, Director Plavzik took ill and went on leave of absence. He attempted to return, but his health would not allow him to do so, and on September 10th of 1962, he resigned his position. He returned to Michigan to live, and on 216 of 98, he passed away at the age of 91. Mylon Plazic worked in the law enforcement field for 36 years and held leadership positions in four different states. In a letter to his friend, fellow Hall of Famer Henry Deitch, in 1994, he discussed those years and stated his time in Park Forest is always his fondest memories of that great career. It is with great fondness and the pride of our past history that I am honored to present Public Safety Director Colonel Mylon Plazic into the Park Forest Class of 2021 Hall of Fame. Thank you. I am Jane Nickel presenting the nomination for John Logan Scott, who was nominated by the Park Forest Historical Society Board. John L. Scott was the second village manager of Park Forest, having served from 1952 to 1962. Immediately before coming to Park Forest, Scott had been the finance director of Winnetka, Illinois. His wife, Eleanor, said Park Forest was his favorite job for the people the newness and the spirit of the created community. John himself said in his oral history interview of 1996, I was a young man trying to get his first village managership and I probably would have taken almost anything to get this, that start. But in retrospect, I now realize how fortunate I was to come to Park Forest because the caliber of the people on the board of trustees and the caliber of the people who were their advisors was way up here and I was just extremely fortunate to have my first experience and best experience from that point of view in Park Forest. John had the knowledge to help the board set up the budget for the new village government. One of his first accomplishments was to oversee the planning and fundraising for the three separate buildings which would make up the public safety building to permit for the hiring of paid firemen, a public works building to replace the construction shack that had been used, and a brand new village hall. It required the making of plans, selling the bond issue to the voters, selling the bonds, then constructing the buildings. John had the responsibility of leading the setting up of much of the village government and how it would do business. He had been preceded in this by Edmund Miesenhelder, the first village manager, who had served from 1950 to 1952. During John's tenure, the number of Village staff had grown to 60 or 70 employees with a very strong and professional staff. One outstanding part he played in the village was his handling of the first integration. When a mob had formed in the summer of 1959 at the offhand suggestion that a family might sell their home to an African American family, John worked with village president Robert Dinnerstein to draft the statement of village policy with respect to local residents of members of the Negro race. 
Bob gave much credit to John for the final wording issued in July 1959. The last paragraph read, The village government neither encourages nor discourages the residents in the village of members of the Negro race. The village government must extend equal services and protection of the law to all its citizens without any discrimination between them. In the event that a Negro family should make its home in Park Forest, the village government will assure that family the same protection of the law that is afforded to any other resident or property owner in the village. To this end, the village government careful, carefully investigates all information which reaches it so that preparations can be made to avoid any undesirable incidents. Mr. Scott was also village manager when the water plant was purchased from American Community Builders, which was a contentious negotiation accomplished for $3 million and which he still thought was a bargain. Another accomplishment during his service, for which we can all be grateful, was the construction of the extension of Orchard Drive from the Baptist Church through Lincolnwood and construction of the two underpasses over Orchard Drive. He was here for the bond issue of 1957, which involved a huge campaign to get the first public library building, the recreation center building shared with Westwood Junior High, an unsuccessful attempt to get a golf course in Central Park, and there's something else I forgot to look up, but those were the major <laughs> things that I, I can remember. And um, I should also say here that um, that memo that was sent out to the village government now hangs in the National Museum of American History. Um, I had the privilege of meeting John Scott twice and doing the oral history interview with him in 1996. We were very fortunate to have had his leadership for 10 years in the early days of Park Forest to help establish our village government. Raised in New Britain, Connecticut, Scott graduated from Princeton University and the University of Chicago. Selected for officer candidate school in 1941, he led a landing craft as a medical officer on D-Day at Utah Beach. He was part of the 4th Infantry Division and later served at Hurtgen Forest and in the Battle of the Bulge. And that was from um, an article by David Hennessy after John's death. Um, and we do like, because we're a GI town, we like to note what uh, military service our people had before. This certainly led to the strength of our leadership here in the village. We've not been able to reach Mr. Scott's survivors, but we accept the award on their behalf and we'll continue to try to find them. Thank you. I'm Jane Nickel, and I'm presenting the nomination for H. Thurber Stowell, nominated by the Park Forest Historical Society Board. H. Thurber Stowell lived in Park Forest from February 1953 until 1962. He was a professional architect. Moving into the Will County area and finding no kindergarten for their five-year-old daughter, Thurb and wife Gladys, along with a dozen other couples, formed an organization to canvass that area and tried unsuccessfully to enlist help from officials, then started their own kindergarten. American Community Builders, or ACB, made available an empty residence, and the group hired an accredited teacher. The class had about 30 students, and they charged about $30 per month for each student. And if you want to know more about that kindergarten, we also interviewed Georgiana Ragor, who was one of those early teachers. The experience taught the group, if they did not want to be second-class park foresters, that they had better get involved and participate in the local government. Mr. Stowell, Stowell excuse me, applied to be, and when an opening developed in 1954, was appointed a member of the Plan Commission. Leo Orsi was chairman and was shortly transferred out of Park Forest. Lynn Brenny became chairman. When Mr. Brenny soon joined the village Board of Trustees, Thurb became chairman and remained so until 1959. The Plan Commission was very busy in those early days. ACB was constantly before them with new subdivisions to review. 
They met two evenings a month with many meetings going until 2 a.m. There was much work to be done between meetings, working with village planner Blaine Bud Osterling and the village engineer. In addition, Mr. Stowell was an early advocate for the underpass under the railroad tracks and it took time to review, review the railroad submittal. After retiring from the plan commission, Thurb was called up to chair the Commission on Human Relations as integration loomed in Park Forest. Countrywide, many communities, including Cicero, Illinois, and Deerfield, Illinois, and Levittown, had difficult experience with civil unrest when integration occurred or was attempted. Park Forest was determined that it not occur here. The Commission studied many municipalities where there had been peaceful integration. Their report to the board indicated that contrary to popular belief, generally there had been no loss of property values and that the key to peaceful acceptance was to strictly uphold the law that permitted any party to own and to occupy property. The Board of Trustees accepted and upheld the Commission's report. The police chief was notified that this was their unequivocal position and they also told the village's realtors. They added that steering would not be permitted. When an African-American family was moving in, and an unmarked police car patrolled the neighborhood and or was stationed near the home. Village President Robert Dinnerstein, trustees, pastors, and others visited with neighbors in teams of two to tell them about the new family and to answer any questions. The first integration of an African-American family happened peacefully in late December 1959. Mr. Stowell served as chairman of the Commission on Human Relations until 1962, I believe. The Stowell family moved out of Park Forest in 1962. Mr. Stowell now lives in Willowbrook, Illinois, and he's 100 years old. Mr. Stowell had an, illust an illustrious career in architecture he was named to the Fellows of the American Institute of Architects in 1979. He served on the board of the American Institute of Architects. He was partner in Stowell, Cook, Frolikstein, but was under various names including Fink Stowell and Associates and Fink Stowell and Frolikstein. Harold Thurber Stowell did participate in the Library of Congress World War II Veterans History Project and served in the U.S. Navy, having served in the U.S. Navy from 1942 to 1946 and on the USS Wyoming. And I have to thank him in his three points that we asked them to send. He basically wrote this speech. He didn't know anything about the Hall of Fame. I met him in the fall when his niece brought him to the museum for his 100th birthday. And I immediately knew what he was saying he had done and participated in, which is why we nominated him. So we very much appreciate the work Mr. Stowell did for our village before he left it. Thank you, Jane. It has been a pleasure working with you these last few months and becoming acquainted with the Historical Society. It is a fine thing that you're doing here, collecting memorabilia and first-hand information from the early days when cornfields were being converted into a thriving village, populated in a large part by World War II veterans and their families. The conscientious work that you are putting in today will be cherished by generations to come. I am honored and humbled to accept this entrance into the Society's Hall of Fame. When my family and I arrived in Park Forest in early March 1953, we were part of a group of about 40 families who were, in the, who were the first to settle into the Will County portion of Park Forest. Many of us had children about five years old we were confronted with the fact that kindergarten was not offered by the school district. So we banded together, canvassed the newcomers, and established our own kindergarten. 
This experience led us to believe that if we didn't want our area to become a second-class part of Park Forest, we had better become involved in the village government. Being an architect with some city planning education, I volunteered for the plan commission to which I was appointed and eventually became chairman. 19, <coughs> excuse me, 1954 to 1959 was a very, very busy time for the commission. We reviewed the plans for subdivision after subdivision brought to us by American community builders. We made suggestions and asserted the applicable village requirements. I like to think that our review contributed to more successful city planning. The credibility that I gained as chairman during this growth period led to my being appointed to chair the Human Relations Commission. My work in this role contributed to Park Forest evolving into a diverse community in a calm and peaceful manner, as opposed to the dis disruption and violence experienced by so many other municipalities. I accept this honor, recognizing the thoughtful contributions of the commission members who worked with me. Thank you again and again. Congratulations to all of our inductees and their families. Hall of Fame nomination forms are made available in October each year and nominations are accepted through December 31st. Look to your left and look to your right. Someone you know should be nominated next year. And maybe next year we can meet in person again at Freedom Hall. Stay safe and healthy until we meet again.